Hey friends, Anne here and welcome back to worship. I am so glad that you've chosen to join us for worship today. We are going through the book of Philippians and so far we have been through four different weeks in the book of Philippians. The first week we talked about how God is not done with us, that he is still continuing to work. And then we talked about how we can have joy in suffering by flipping our perspective on how we see our trouble and our difficulties. And then we had an important lesson on unity within the church. And then last week we looked at how we are called to reflect God's light out into the world. We have had some really important topics that we have talked about. And today we're going to be talking about willingness. But the way that Paul is going to do this is he's going to talk about a couple of individuals. He's going to talk about Timothy, then we're going to look at Paul himself, and then we're going to look at this guy named Epaphroditus. And at first glance, you would think in your reading, and what does this have to do with any of the important topics that we have been talking about? Um, it almost seems more like travel arrangements. It seems like somebody in the middle of this really important letter about gospel truths is inserting something that doesn't really matter to us today. Except for, I want you to notice that there is a pattern of willingness in all of the people that we're going to be talking about today. And that they are willing to be influencers. They're willing to be sent to serve and to sacrifice. And so today, the first question that I want to ask you is, have you ever been influenced by someone? You know, today on social media platforms, we talk about influencers as people that have a long, a long following, that have a big following of people that will listen to them and do what they say, right? I confess that I have been influenced on more than one occasion. And you may say, Anne, what are you holding in your hand are these drumsticks? No, they're not drumsticks. They're actually things that I have been influenced to buy. Some of the things that I actually use the most in my life because I love to cook. And on the end of these two sticks are different cooking measurements. And I use them almost every single day but I didn't come across them on my own. I didn't discover them on my own. I was influenced to buy them because of people that I follow online who said, hey, you've got to try these. These are great. You're never going to lose them again. And I've had them for about three years and I've never lost them. Friends, have you ever been influenced by someone? Have you ever influenced someone else? Maybe you have been influenced to purchase things or do something. Maybe it was a good thing. Maybe it was a bad thing. Influence can be used for good purposes or for bad purposes. But I want us to begin thinking about what does it look like to be influenced in our lives? So let's think about the people that have influenced you. Um, and begin to just kind of draw to mind some of those people that come up when I ask these questions. Who has influenced you spiritually? Who has been an influence in helping you draw closer to Christ? Who has been someone that has bolstered your faith, that has taught you about the Bible, that has revealed things to you that you didn't know before? Who has influenced you spiritually? Who has influenced you relationally? Who has been a relational guide for you to let you know how you're supposed to operate in your relationships? Who has influenced you well, maybe in your marriage or in your friendship or even in your parenting relationships? Who has influenced you relationally? And then the third one is who has influenced you professionally? I don't know what you do for a living. Maybe some of you are um, working out of the home. Maybe some of you are working in the home. Maybe some of you are in ministry. Maybe some of you are in office jobs, whatever it looks like. Who has influenced you in helping you do the things that you do throughout your day? Who has made you a better person? Who has made you more efficient and more effective? Who has made you more competent and knowledgeable about the things that you are doing? Could be a teacher, could be a mentor, could be a boss or a coworker. Who is it that has influenced you? 
Today we're going to talk about these three guys and we're going to see that they are here on purpose, not by accident in this letter. Because Paul wants them to be seen as influencers. He wants them to be seen as people that are to be respected, are to be listened to. And the reason that they are to be listened to and that they are to be influencers is because of their willingness. It's not just because of their competence. It's not just because of, um, of the way that they can lead a crowd. That's not what it is. And it's not certainly the way that someone can convince someone else to purchase something, right? So influencers that we are talking about today are influencers because of their willingness. So let's go ahead and dig in. We're going to be in chapter 2, and we're going to start with verse 19, and it says this. We're talking about Timothy here. If the Lord Jesus is willing, I hope to send Timothy to you soon for a visit. Then he can cheer me up by telling me how you are getting along. I have no one else like Timothy who genuinely cares about your welfare. All the others care only for themselves and not for what matters to Jesus Christ. But you know how Timothy has proved himself. Like a son with his father, he has served with me in preaching the good news. I hope to send him to you just as soon as I find out what is going to happen to me here. So friends, here's what I want you to realize and to recognize is that Timothy, he is someone that should be influencing the people at the church in Philippi that Paul is saying, hey, Timothy is an influencer. He is someone that I want you to listen to, and so I am going to send him to you, and I'm going to send him to you to serve you, and he is going to be that person that can give you guidance and give you help when I cannot. And notice what he says about Timothy's character. We know that he is honest, that he has proved himself, that other people came for just what they could receive, but Timothy is a person that really cares about what Christ cares about. We know from other parts of Paul's writings that Timothy was someone who came to faith early on in his life, that his grandmother Eunice is the one who brought him to faith, and that he grew up in this beautiful faith-filled environment. We know from other writings that Timothy was biracial. He had a Jewish parent and a, and a Gentile parent. And so Timothy was in the position to be able to understand and relate to multiple different kinds of people. We know that Timothy spent time with Paul. He was invested and he was learning and he was growing, that he was someone that was eager to be with Paul. But we also know that Timothy left the comfort of his home in order to travel on these missionary journeys with Paul and to travel to these places and be sent to these places where things were not comfortable, where the early church was being persecuted. Timothy was a man of character. He was an influencer. And he was an influencer not because he was good at his job, but because he was willing. Let's look at these three areas where Timothy was willing. He was willing to be sent. He was sent to share the gospel, to tell the good news. He was sent not just to this church, but to multiple churches. Timothy was willing to be sent. Timothy was also willing to serve. We hear here in this passage that Paul was sending Timothy not to receive from the Philippians, but so that he could serve the Philippians, so that he could minister to them. In Paul's absence, Timothy was going to serve them. We also know that he was willing to sacrifice. He left to the safety and the comfort of his home in order to go and travel with Paul in very difficult circumstances where there wasn't always enough and where there was persecution, where there was hatred, where there was conflict and dissension. And yet Timothy was willing to go. Timothy's willingness made him an influencer, an influencer that Paul could commend to the people to say, hey, I'm sending Timothy to you 
because I want you to be influenced by him. So we also know that the next verse says this, and I have confidence from the Lord that I myself will come to see you soon. So Paul is even commending himself as an influencer to say, hey, I am hoping that I will also come back to see you soon. Now, what do we know about Paul's character, about his nature, about what qualifies him to be an influencer? Well, Paul was from a prestigious family. He was from a Jewish family where his father was actually a Pharisee and Paul followed in his footsteps. Paul continued on to be a Pharisee just as his father had, and Paul had reached great status and preference in terms of his ability to be an influencer with, within the Jewish people. He had reached that level where people were looking up to him and he was taking it so far as to be so zealous for the Jewish faith and the Jewish people that he was going out and persecuting anyone who he felt like got in the way of them accomplishing um, and meeting all the requirements of the Jewish religion. And so Paul early on was going around and persecuting Christians. He was trying to put them to death. He was rounding them up. He was arresting them. And then we know that Paul was influenced by Jesus because Jesus met Paul on the road to Damascus and he had a real encounter with Paul an encounter that changed Paul's life forever that we can read about in the book of Acts where he was just completely turned around. And instead of persecuting Christians, he began helping Christians and he began preaching and he began to try to do the work that the Christians were doing that he was persecuting them for in the first place. Paul had been transformed. And even though he was influential as a Pharisee, he was even more influential as a believer as a follower of Jesus, as a follower of the way, as they used to call it. And so here is Paul, he's going around the whole ancient world on as many missionary journeys as he can possibly squeeze in. And he is planting as many churches as he possibly can and raising up leaders and sending them out. He was an influencer. He had influenced Timothy, he had influenced Luke, he had influenced so many other people that he was raising up and training up and sending out. And was it Paul's credentials that made him an influencer? Was it his following that made him an influencer? No, it was these three important things. The same things that made Timothy an influencer also made Paul an influencer. Friends, Paul was willing to be sent not only was he sent out to tell the gospel to a particular area, he was sent out to tell the gospel to the Gentiles in particular. The Jews had rejected Jesus. And as a Jew, Paul himself had rejected Jesus. And so he was being sent out to tell the gospel to the Gentiles, to the people that were outside of that Jewish religion. So he was willing to be sent. He was also willing to serve. He was willing to serve to the point of imprisonment, to the point of being arrested falsely for things that he did not even do. He was willing to, be, to serve people who had persecuted him. He was willing to serve those who arrested him. He was willing to serve those who rejected him. Friends, Paul was willing to be sent, he was willing to serve, and he was willing to sacrifice. He sacrificed his freedom. He sacrificed his economic livelihood as a tent maker. He sacrificed his security by being among an elite group with a lot of status. He sacrificed his reputation. He ended up sacrificing his life. Friends, Paul was an influencer, not because of his capabilities, not because of what he had accomplished, but he was an influencer because he was willing to be sent to serve and to sacrifice. 
So we have Timothy, we have Paul, and both of these are influencers to the church at Philippi. And now we're going to read about one more influencer that is here in chapter 2. And it says this, starting in 25, Meanwhile, I thought I should send Epaphroditus back to you. He is a true brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, and he was your messenger to help me in my need. I am sending him because he has been longing to see you, and he was very distressed that you heard he was ill. And he certainly was ill. In fact, he almost died. But God had mercy on him and also on me, so that I would not have one sorrow after another. So I am all the more anxious to send him back to you, for I know you will be glad to see him, and then I will not be so worried about you. Welcome him in the Lord's love and with great joy and give him the honor that the people like him deserve. For he risked his life for the work of Christ and he was at the point of death while doing for me what you couldn't do from far away. Friends, once again, Epaphroditus was an influencer. He was an influencer that Paul was sending back to the Philippian church, and he was commending Epaphroditus to the Philippians to say, hey, this is an influencer that I want you to follow, that I want you to listen to. And what made Epaphroditus an influencer? I bet you can guess. It's the fact that he was willing that he was willing to be sent, to be sent to Paul, to give Paul the, the help that he needed. He was willing to be sent to Paul to take him the money and the provisions that he needed in order to care for Paul. He was willing to be sent back to the Philippians with this letter that was a dangerous trip. I mean, Epaphroditus may not make it back, but yet he was willing to be sent. He was also willing to serve. He was actually willing to serve Paul, not in luxury accommodations, but in a jail cell where things were rough. As a matter of fact, they were so rough that he was willing to sacrifice his own health in order to stay with Paul. And Paul was sending him back as an example to the Philippians, as an example to the church to say, this man is an influencer. This is a man to be commended to you that you should follow because he is willing to be sent to serve and to sacrifice. So friends, think about the people that you influence in your life. Who are you influencing? Is it your children? Is it people at work? Is it your friends? Is it someone that you serve with on a particular ministry? Is it somebody who does not yet know Christ, but yet you're trying to show Christ to them? The thing that is going to make you an influencer is not your popularity or the number of followers that you have. It's not how many people are listening to you or if you have a big platform. Friends, the thing that is going to make you an influencer is your willingness. Are you willing? Are you willing to be sent? To be sent out into the world, in your neighborhood, in your sphere of influence? Are you willing to be sent out even among your friends who don't yet believe and share the gospel with them? Share the good news of the relationship that you have found in Jesus? Are you willing to be sent? And then the other thing that's going to make you influ influential is your willingness to serve. Are you willing to serve? Are you willing to give up your rights in order to serve and cater to someone else? Are you willing to forget yourself and elevate someone else and serve them in the way that God has called you to serve them? Are you willing to serve even when it costs you something? even when it's uncomfortable, even when you're not quite sure if you can do it, are you willing to serve? And the third question that is going to help you know how you are uh, using your influence is, are you willing to sacrifice? Like I said, even when it costs you something, even when you think people may reject you, are you willing to sacrifice? 
Are you willing to sacrifice some of your financial means so that you can serve someone else? Are you willing to sacrifice your influence and truly be who God has called you to be? Are you willing to sacrifice? Friends, it's so important for us as believers to know that we are influencers. It is not about the number of followers that we have or how many commendations we get or how big our status is. The question is, are you willing? Are you willing to be sent? Are you willing to serve? Are you willing to sacrifice? Friends, I hope that this has touched something within you. And I want to encourage you today to go out and find that one other person that needs to hear this message. Find that one other person that needs to see what it's like to be an influencer for Christ that is sent out, that is willing to serve and willing to sacrifice. Friends, don't forget that this week we are going to have another reading guide. I hope that you will continue to read along with us about what it means to be willing and to be an influencer in the lives of other people. Friends, go out and find that one and show them that you are willing. We're going to have a worship song, but will you pray with me right now? Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for this reminder, this example of these three people that they were influencers not because of what they had, but because of who they are in you and their willingness to be sent, to serve, and Father, to reach out to others with the gospel, even if it costs them. Father, I ask that you will open our hearts and our minds to those areas where we can more fully live into this kind of influence and be willing to be sent and to serve and to sacrifice for your name's sake and for the gospel. In your name I pray, amen. said it would be easy We never said there'd be no pain But you promise you will go with me Your promises you will always keep And I confess how much I need you And I confess that I am I promise I won't fail you, but you promise you will not fail you. When I'm in the valley, I will feel no evil. When enemies surround me, you will prepare a table. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Surely goodness and mercy. Will follow me. There is beauty in the struggle, but you don't waste a single day. Your presence is my shield, your presence is my victory. There is beauty in the struggle But you don't waste a single day Oh, your presence in my shelter Your presence in my victory When I'm in the valley I will feel no evil When enemies surround me You'll prepare a table Surely goodness and mercy Will follow me Surely goodness and mercy Will follow me I can't see it all I am seen enough to know All that 
that you are faithful I can't see it all I have seen enough to know Oh, that you are faithful I can't see it all But I have seen enough to know Oh, that you are faithful I can't see it all But I have seen enough to know Oh, that you are faithful I will feel no evil when enemies surround me. You prepare a table, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me.